Good evening and welcome to another fantastic edition of Sit Back with Shaq right here on the Podhub Facebook page. It's a show that we're talking to personalities, celebrities and of course individuals pertaining to what is trending in Sri Lanka right now and what is trending at the moment. Those are the individuals that we would like to speak to. It's another great show we've lined up for you. We do this every Tuesday and Thursday night at 8.30 as we come to you live on the Facebook page. We're all set to go, like I said, with another fantastic show for tonight. We're going to take a quick break. When we come back, we'll have the guest on the show and lots of good questions that we have for him right after this taking a break we'll be back power dressing see this is a very unique thing for a demand who won't be successful if you want to grow up in life when you go into certain level you know you need to have that power look Sri Lanka's score of 338 for 6 was imposing. I really thought it was imposing. And this is what everyone expected Sri Lanka to do. One of the issues, I'm sure you understand, is that Sri Lanka could not do this in the World Cup. Look at the other games. Burglar with toy pistol injured in police shooting. A suspect who entered a finance firm in the Horana town was hospitalized when police fired at him early yesterday morning. Okay, so today on Song Stories, we're going to be talking about this great song by Bruce Springsteen. It's called Glory Days. Podhub, whenever, wherever. Good evening and welcome back to Sit Back with Shaq. It's the 30th of April, Thursday night, coming to you live on the Facebook page of Podhub. And of course, like I said earlier on, lots of wonderful personalities and celebrities have graced the show already. And we've got so many lined up for you as we move on. Right now, it is my pleasure, absolute pleasure, to introduce an old friend of mine. And we've actually known each other for a very, very long time. And now, of course, the entire country knows knows of this individual so let's uh, warmly welcome Mevan Pires to the show right now good evening Mevan okay so we obviously seem to be the fact that we can't necessarily hear you Mevan I think you need to talk up a bit louder maybe let's try your mic no, I, I, I wish I okay. could lip read. What about this one? No. Ah, it's much better, Mevan. Yes, it's nice to have you on the show. Can hear you loud and clear. How okay, are you? We've got a little problem because uh, now maybe you can hear me, but I can't hear you. So let's just give it another try. Give me a second. Okay. Yeah. Should be able to hear me now? Are we good now? No. I think we're good now. Can you hear me? Oh. <laughs> Technical difficulties. See. Yeah, technology. Don't worry. Don't worry. We always have this. We always have this. We'll try and sort this out. Uh, okay. So here's what we let me give me a, give me a, a minute check. Okay. So Mev, what I'll do is we're gonna take a quick break. We'll try and sort this out off air, and I'm sure this is a very tiny issue that we'll sort it out. Nothing to worry about. We'll be back right after this. Technical issues, don't worry. We have this all the time, but we will definitely get to the bottom of it. Right after this with Mevan Paris right here on Sit Back. And welcome to my pod according to Sham. We'll be reviewing the latest in the movie world, good, the bad, and the ugly. Mama will run as I document my journey of being a new mom. We are going to explore into every part of the land to collect all those mysterious history, all the news and insight that you need on the game you love. Only on Pod Right here on Pod On Pod Only on Pod Here on Pod Power dressing. 
see, this is a very unique thing for a demand who wants to be successful. If you want to grow up in life, when you go into certain level, you know, you need to have that power loop. Sri Lanka's score of 338 for 6 was imposing. I really thought it was imposing. And this is what everyone expected Sri Lanka to do. One of the issues, I'm sure you understand, is that Sri Lanka could not do this in the World Cup. Look at the other games. Burglar with toy pistol injured in police shooting. A suspect who entered a finance firm in the Horana town was hospitalized when police fired at him early yesterday morning. Okay, so today on Song Stories, we're going to be talking about this great song by Bruce Springsteen. It's called Glory Days. Podhub, whenever, wherever. Hi, this is Shah, and welcome to my pod at Hollywood Shah. We'll be reviewing the latest in the movie world, the good, the bad, and the ugly. Mom on the run as I document my journey of being a new mom. We are going to explore into every part of Colombo to collect all those mysterious history, all the news and insight that you need on the game you love. Only on Podhub. Right here on Podhub. On Podhub. Only on Podhub. Here on Podhub. Right, welcome back to the show. Let's give this another shot. Mevan Piri is on the show right here on Sit Back on a Thursday. All Mevan, right. can, can we you hear, hear me you? now? Yes, I can hear you. Can you hear me? Okay, perfect. Yes, yes. Oh, yes, wonderful. Yes. It's great. Ooh. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> How are you doing, my friend? It's been a long time. We've actually spoken to each other. I know, I know. That's. Uh, I mean, uh, it's, it's good that you mentioned that, you know, it's, it's, actually it's a long time that, you know, we, you and I have actually known each other. If I if I'm not mistaken, uh, my first job interview was uh, at YesFM when I was 19 or something. Uh, you weren't the one interviewing, but I think at some point of time we had an interaction back then. But then right throughout, I mean, you know, various events and and whatnot, we've, we've kind of been in touch on and off again. Of course, and and I, I distinctly remember that we've actually done uh, at that time we were doing a lot of work with Cinnamon, and you were part of Cinnamon. Uh, and you spearheaded exactly. quite a few projects uh, with with the radio station at that time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Lots of support from from you guys as well. I remember us bringing in some celebrities. A couple of really cool events that we had at the start. I don't know whether you recall, Shaq, but we brought in Miss France, yep. uh, the entire edition, all the finalists. Uh, <laughs> you know, followed by Miss India. So all these beauty pageants. Uh, but there are also some some more serious work with uh, with the bloggers conference, etc. Um, yeah, yeah, kudos. The cinema team has been, been uh, carrying on with that work. I think Dilip has been in charge of uh, most of that. So yeah, good times. Good times, good times. And it, it's great that we obviously kick-started by mentioning that because um, it's about a year now, Mevan. Uh, I mean, when you obviously joined Pick Me Foods and uh, from a very comfortable corporate job to a startup life, uh, what was the thinking behind that and uh, what are the challenges like? Uh, so, Shaq, I, I think I joined John Keys in 2013. I, I don't think I ever imagined myself working in a, in a corporate set environment. Uh, but it so happened that I was kind of, you know, asked to take this challenge on. Uh, and then I, I did it and it was really fun, especially during my time at Cinnamon. And then I was uh, at Elephant House for about a year and a half. And that was also a great uh, learning curve. But I, I, I thought to myself after about six years in, in, a, in a really established company, which I think is an is amazing uh, atmosphere and culture, I, I wanted a bit of a change in, in, in pace. Uh, and I thought maybe, you know, I should probably take a uh, dive into the startup. Because, you know, in, in every uh, corporate, including John Keys and so many other places, uh, you know, everyone's saying, think like a startup, right? You, you even get these boards. Uh, in the office saying think like a startup and move like a startup etc but when you look around you realize that no one's been in a startup <laughs> yeah so, everyone's established so, so that's the whole <laughs> yeah exactly so that's the whole thing so i thought i'm I, I should probably dive in and yeah it's been one year uh one hell of a ride uh yeah i, th I think i think uh you know for most of the year we were we were really trying to uh, get pick me food on the map, you know, getting our, our processors and everything sorted because we were just launching that product. Mm -hmm. uh, but I think now, especially in the last month and a half or so, 
uh, it's that time of you know you kind of know okay we've got somewhere at least i'm not saying this is the end but probably this is the beginning of something great uh, but yes we know we are on the right track now yeah so it's just a fantastic feature so far and you know in the last like you said one and a half months have been quite nerve-wracking for you and we'll, we'll get into that in uh, in as we move on with the show but as the head of operations of pick me foods what is that one thing that always keeps you on your toes mivan uh so shak it's like a this this whole operation is pretty much a it's not 24 hours but it's almost like 18 hours right so you have your you have your lunch peak which with a lot of activities happen and then you have dinner so right now as i am speaking to you there are hundreds of orders being delivered for folks who are ordering dinner right. and it's like it becomes a bit of a game right because you know you're you're kind of watching the count you're watching what what's going to happen uh so as a result uh you know every day including saturday sunday holidays whatever especially with the weekends when the demand is high up uh you know you're completely hooked on and i think especially when when things go wrong because we are we are a scale business right we do thousands of uh, deliveries every single day uh you know there's be some sort of mishaps here and there especially when we are working with a uh, we are working in the gig economy we are working with a fleet that are not really employees of ours right uh, so this is what keeps me on my toes all the time this is what the team is also you know doing a fantastic job of managing uh, but yes it just doesn't end you know uh, it it will continue on dinner usually finishes at about 11 o'clock and uh, you know it it uh, and the count goes up it's, it's It's a lovely feeling to be chasing those targets, getting ahead of it, and all of that. Um, but yeah, it's a full-time job, if I were to say that. Pretty exciting, also, while we're at it. Um, as we, as we obviously have quite a few things that we 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 talked or we need to talk about. Um, let's let's get into uh, the nitty gritties of what we experienced almost a month ago, a month and a half ago. and um the ability of pikmi's agility in responding uh to this unprecedented crisis uh talk us through that mevan talk us through that step it's uh, because uh pikmi of course uh, teamed up with satosa at that point was the very first to actually come out and uh, help uh, almost everybody in sri lanka uh the initiation the implementation uh the crazy work hours uh, we would this is something that we want to hear from you because what we see is what is the story on the outside which is good news but what we want to yeah. hear the behind the scene stories how was it i mean i saw a picture i saw a picture on your facebook page where we obviously set up a remote office in your house and uh, you're basically on calls right throughout but talk us through it because right now you're a bit settled at the moment so this might be a good time for you to sort of you know relive those crazy moments for sure for sure uh, so shak i mean uh, one word that i must start off with it's a it's a team effort right uh, so uh, at the at the initial stages i was kind of um, you know so to speak uh, you know uh, communicating uh, on some of our updates and keeping people in the loop but it was a complete team effort it's actually quite a quite a beautiful like anecdote because the whole thing started when this when the curfew came about we knew that we'd have to change our business model a little bit we were a little unsure what to do but we knew that there was a play for delivery companies because people were staying at home uh, we were looking and talking to our traditional the restaurants that we operate on a daily basis asking okay how many of you guys it except but then it was this one month also that at home i you know what happens when people run out of gas right especially if you're cooking at home you know even to to boil your water especially people with kids uh you know my wife was pregnant time so where i knew people uh who are pregnant etc would probably have boiled cold water that's the basic thing that's you know taught across in schools for kids in sri lanka so how are you going to boil your water if you can't step out of your house one and you don't have gas so actually that trigger big call to uh, the chairman of litro who was also um, someone who we worked for before because he was the chairman of luxella so during the cinnamon days we we worked very closely uh, and and he was really mobilized for not shack i mean so a government entity uh, a very i got lovers on that sunday itself we had our first uh, litro outlet delivering through the pikmi app 
right? Uh, Satosa was in the works. Uh, I think our, our CEO EO and CEO was also talking to Satosa at the time. And that came straight after. And then the rest was history because we, we knew that there was a huge amount of demand. So we were just getting more and more restaurants uh, on board the platform. Uh, so as you said, some crazy stories. I mean, everybody has been working from home for uh, a little over about 40 or 41 days. Yeah. Uh, yep. And it's been nonstop, right? You know, so Aurudu, no breaks. Uh, poe days, Saturdays, Sundays, etc. no breaks. You can't even remember uh, but that's Poe days anymore. You don't, you don't. Like suddenly someone uh, reminded us today at a, at a meeting that tomorrow is May Day and it's supposed to be a holiday. <laughs> yeah. right? uh, so the real question is not whether we are going to take a break, but also whether the restaurants and the vendors are going to take a break themselves. So we had to quickly do a checkup on them. Um, but yeah, everybody and PICP is a very small organization, right? It has about 100 plus uh, employees working in the engineering department. Uh, we've only got 16 members in the PICP food department. Right? That's under and my team. Uh, but the entire team rallied around because our taxi hailing business suddenly had to stop. So everybody chipped in. What we did was we uh, turned our entire delivery, uh, turned our entire hailing fleet, which is uh, our tooks, our cars, sedans, etc., also to be delivery partners. And you know, just mobilized them, got as many vendors as possible. And then as of today, we've actually been able to restart our food operations as well. So we've got. Uh, about 100 restaurants and, and increasing every single day. And we also got a lot of uh, vendors who are doing essential items and fresh produce. So, yeah, it's been a crazy ride. Yeah. But how was it? How was it? Like you said, I mean, yes, it was a team effort. But um, how was it to rally the drivers and rally the individuals who need to basically go ahead and do the uh, essential uh, drop offs to individuals? How, how easy or how hard was it to actually rally them for this? Yeah, so Shaq, there was an obvious concern on the, the approval side of things, right? right? Because we, at the start, we were not sure how many curfew passes we we're going to get, how many drivers are going to be allowed. Uh, so that had a lot of kind of, you know, negotiations with the authorities because it's not a simple negotiation. There's a health crisis on one side, which we need to be careful about. Uh, then there's also, you know, the process of people coming from wherever they are to the head office, getting their curfew pass and getting onto the road. So that kind of took a, took a little bit uh, of time to figure that out. But, but you know, partnerships with uh, Sato Salitru and, and the works kind of really helped us through as well. Uh, but beyond that, really, you need to also understand that these are all gig workers. Yeah, they're all daily wage earners, so to speak. So we knew that if we do not give them the opportunity, at least, to come and earn on the platform, we are doing a disservice to the riders that depend on us because suddenly they don't have any jobs. Uh, and they're stuck at home and most cases they are the breadwinners they're the sole breadwinners of some of those families so we needed to create that opportunity for them to work and from that onwards we saw a huge response from the riders i mean there was a health risk there was a risk with you know you know navigating through loads of uh, police stations and checkpoints from their homes they might be out of colombo to get to office and get their curfew passes on the roads itself things are not always very uh, easy because you know curfew is being lifted at times put on back at times uh, but the riders and the delivery partners all of them have been phenomenal they've, they've understood that this is truly a, a national service that we're engaging it's not just opportunity um, and yes of themselves they knew that really important make sure that this essentially so really you might ask under normal circumstances i would have taken a long time to convince three-wheel drivers to suddenly turn into delivery partners. And that's right. not easy. You need training. You've got to get them get them aligned. But right. in this case, I think they were much more forthcoming uh, and they really jumped on it. And also taking a look at your app system itself, would you would you think that this um, there was this is, was a great sort of a, a boost for lots of people who have not downloaded their app and uh, give them an opportunity for them to actually jump on board the digital platform uh, lots you know have heard about pick me lots of them obviously have heard about it not many people have downloaded now I mean I would I would easily think maybe nine out of ten individuals in this country have a pick me up because of what you guys sort of came out with in in such quick time yeah exactly Shaq. I mean uh, even though I can't share the, the exact numbers for, for reasons best known but then 
uh, yeah, we've seen a huge surge, right? Because even within the app, a lot of people were using this for the taxi hailing purposes and not as many were using it to order their food, right? Because that was still a relatively new concept and people were just getting used to it. So this whole delivery world just picked up, uh, you know, like crazy, a lot of new downloads, a lot of people who were on the app, uh, utilization improved a, a lot. And we've had so many great stories. I've tried to repost some of them uh, on and off and the, the Pickwood page also does that. But we've got a ton of great views coming in uh, about the need because I mean, there was this lovely, lovely statement that, uh, that a lady that, uh, that I know I actually had posted. Uh, she said, look, you know, uh, during these difficult times, uh, you know, the kids these days are going to grow up knowing that it was pick me who got their groceries delivered. It was pick me that got their gas delivered, right? It's, a, it's like the wartime stories, right? right. You talk your, your time during, you know, the, the whole, uh, uh, what do I say, the whole ration system that was there. Uh, when we closed up the economy, I mean, right. our parents still say those stories how they had to stand with a ration card uh, in the store. That's right. And maybe uh, uh, kids these days are probably going to grow up hearing stories of how the whole country was on lockdown. We didn't know what to do. And in some parts, at least, I'm not saying we are serving the entire 20 million population, but we are serving a significant uh, portion of it. Uh, I am sure that the, the stories will be managed to, you know, get online get our stuff delivered home and you know that that's going to last a, a lifetime i think what what sort of really um caught the hearts of almost every sri lankan out there was the fact that after the curfew was imposed uh, in the latter part of march um, some of them unfortunately could not get i mean we had one day where we could actually go and buy our groceries and people were standing in line all over sri lanka to get into the supermarkets once the curfew once the lockdown came about lots of them unfortunately couldn't get their basic essentials and that there was an indefinite curfew i think what really happened there is the fact that nobody knew what to do Nobody, be, I mean, everybody was understandably running around like headless chicken. But again, like I said, what really caught the hearts of Sri Lankans is the fact that Pick Me stood up. Pick Me basically came up and said, listen, we can't give you the luxuries that you have been enjoying so far. But what we can do is ensure the fact that we give you the essentials. And here are very simple steps for you to basically go through and get a hold of the essentials. Now, that process how long did that process basically come about within uh, your the brains in in the organization i think it was really fast i mean as an organization uh, and as a startup pick me has always known to be moving really really fast uh, they were the pioneers in non hailing they the years they and you so piece so whole agility piece that's what makes us uh, uniquely positioned over any international competitor is the fact that we can move fast. So we were put to the test pretty much. You know, how fast can you move was the question uh, asked by, by ourselves. So we, we said, you know, let, let's just get there. And, and I agree uh, with your comment about the whole communication piece. And that's why I think at the start, you know, we were just using all forms of communication. I was trying to, you know, tweet out some really simple steps. I know that was going really viral because uh, it was a bit of, it was crisis communications at the end of the day. There was a crisis in place and we had to make some clear directives. This is what we're going to do. We're going to move step by step. We're not going to open the whole thing and crash and burn uh, like so many others did. Uh, and, and But we are going to move forward, right? So we started with Litro, started with Satosa. And said, okay, we can now onboard a few more vendors and then slowly but surely ramp that up. Uh, I would think, I don't know, I don't, I don't want to be, but we didn't have a, didn't have a room and discuss this. Um, I think each person picked up uh, the ball and just ran, right? And that's what uh, is great about a, a company like Pick Me uh, because that kind of flexibility and that empowerment is there. Uh, so, and everyone just rallied around, everyone just fell in place. It's, it's a bit like a kind of a rugby line, you know, the, if there was people, there was support on the line, you know, to, to take it through. 
Excellent. Um, we're just going just before we take a quick break, I would like to let you know that if you've got any questions, if you've got any comments um, for Mivan, by all means, you can post it up on our comment section on the PodHub page. I know that I know the streams being shared on a couple of different pages, but uh, if we actually need those pages coming on, uh, need those comments uh, to get on uh, the screen, you just have to post it on the PodHub page. And here's another one just coming in. I'm keen to watch this chit chat. Heard so much about Mivan Pires. I think uh, lots of people have heard so much about Mivan Pires. And uh, it's time for us to sort of uh, start unravel who Mevan Pires is. Priyanka Mendes, ask the wife if you want the real story. Okay, I think I'm going to do that. Oh, um, that, you know that that's my mom. That's my yeah, mom I do. Mom. <laughs> <laughs> Just her if you can, Jack. It would be a real, real favor. <laughs> we'll get we'll get a hold of the real story. Uh, gonna take a quick break right now, but this is a very very heartwarming video uh, that you need to take a look at. Take a look at the video. We'll take a break right after that. We got lots more to talk about right here with Mevan on Sit Back with Shak. Speak to you soon. Covid Dhanave Vasangate Hetuvin Sri Lanka Ve Rotapura Endriniye Penavi Men Anathuruva Rati Janata Vata Tham Edinida Jeevite Ta Atyavashe Bhand Miladi Keni Me Vishal Gatalu Akpena Naguna Tatwe Melesa Pavate De Janata Vake Pavichya Sadha Gas Cylinder Miladi Keni Me Nuheki Avasaha Nivesval Gas Hingavi Men Ativiyah Ki Gatalu Mooli Kama Handuna Gat Pikmi Samagama Litro Gas Samagama Samakin Ekva Tham Trirodhara Ta Lori Rata Saha Motor Rata Jale Bhavite En निवसतम गैस सिलिंडर बेदादी में क्रियावलियाक आरंब कला मेहदी पिकमी फूड सेवाव हरहा लेबुनु विशाल एनो प्रमानेकट गैस सिलिंडर बेदादी मट अपिट है क्यों ना मेहदी अपगे पिकमी रेदुरन्व वाइरसेन आरक्षा करवी मट विशेश अवधानेयाक मेम क्रियावलिये देवन अधीर वशेन ए मोहते देडी अवश्यतावा क्लिस पेवतुनु अत्यावश्य भांड जनतावगी निवेस्वल्ट बिदाहरी में क्रियावलिये पिक्मी डिलिवरी बलकाय हरहा सिदुकिरीम आरंभ हुना राज्य आयतने अक्वन सतोसहा एक्व विविध प्रमाने अंगे अत्यावश्य भांड मलु जनतावगी उमनावन अनु बिदाहरीम सिदु उना मेहिदी मेम भांड मलु सेकसीम मेंम वर्ग थिरीम पिक्मी सेवक्यान अतिम्म सिदु उ अतर एवा पिक्मी डिलिवरी बलकायमगीन मिन अनतुरुव तवात प्रमुक पेले समागम सहा सिल्लर वेलेंसेल केहिप्याक समगिन अत्वेल बेंद केनीमट पीक्मी समागमट हैकि उना एहे तुवेन तवतवात अत्यावश्य द्रव्य वार्क प्रमानियाक जनताव अतरे बिदाधीमट पीक्मी डिलिवरी बलकायट हैकि उ मेम वेडपिलिवेल एंदिरिनीतिय पेनवीम हेतुएन तमन्गे आधाय मार्ग आहिमिलुकिय अपगे यतुरु पेदिसहा त्रिरोधरात रियदुरान हट नेवत तम आधाय मार्गिय हानेकिन तुरव पवत्वागे नीमट विशालरु Pai pula me api tuhun dina, kebal kuli kebal kan api gula kapas tarik lak kela. Itu bahas tawa kami pik me ayat ini api kata kala. Me madi ati nak kela kiel api ogen nala api pas di la. Em kerupuk kan api me ayat ini api gula mau gula. Am aduh tim istu jantan api pik me ayat ini kena. Lede tik di nama me ayat tik kuku mat tik me wagi pik me ayat ini tik kaya tuh la me wagi kapai mak kala. Me ma minisun api silang ke jantan awen awen. सेवा किरण वगैरह वो गुड़ा कार्डम बोलेना मेम महांगो कार्ता वेट पिकमी रियदुरु रकवरन आंशे में म पिकमी इंजीनियरु आंशे द आपके पिकमी मोबाइल ऐप के नितरम यावत काली नकरमें एंडरिनीतीय माध्य उत निवसे सिटे ऊपरी म सहायोगे लबादुना पिकमी वेत मेम सत्कारे विनुवेन श्रीलंके जनता वगे इताम होद प्रतिचार गलायन � मेम क्रियान वितेय रटे प्रधान माध्य वलद अवधाने दिना गत अतर पिक्मी मेम सेवाव पिलिबंदव माध्य मगीन देनुवत किरीमद सिदु उना श्रेलांकावे गमना गमन पासुकाम सविबल गान्वन डिजिटल ताक्षनिक समागमक्वन पिक्मी मिवनी वेसनकारी 
Welcome back to Sit Back with Shaq on a Thursday evening. We're talking to, of course, uh, the head of operations for Pygmy Foods, Mevan Pires, on the show with us. And uh, Mevan, of course, has been talking to us about Pygmy's agility and uh, the response time that uh, Pygmy, obviously, uh, you know, it was of the fast response time that Pygmy took control of the situation just over a month ago when everybody was basically looking up and wondering what is going to happen. And uh, like he said, um, obviously, the part partnership with lots of uh, individuals and corporates who came forward to ensure that uh, almost all Sri Lankans at least got their essentials which is the most important thing um Mevan, of course there are lots of lots of great stories i mean we can we can keep on talking about uh the um the, the stories that uh, the the last few weeks obviously have brought about especially with uh, pikmi's involvement but um Let's talk about something uh, very interesting which came about almost the same time as this. Now, you're, you're nominated in this very prestigious and elite list of Forbes 30 under 30. Uh, firstly, I wasn't sure that you were under 30, so but then I had to double check that. <laughs> but, <yeah. laughs> so you are under 30, you're qualified, Mevan, you're qualified uh, in yeah. the uh, consumer technology category. First of all, congratulations are in order. And uh, congratulations, you. of course, is bringing, you know, the, the nation into the spotlight at the end of the day. But tell us, how would you like this accolade to motivate other young under 30s out there to achieve their dreams? Because as far as talent is concerned, uh, I think uh, we're a country that we are blessed with talent in different industries. But uh, uh, tell us, how would you like this accolade to sort of, um, um, well, it prove something for the others out there, Mivan? Yeah, Jack, hope you can hear me. Yes, can of course. Well? Yep, yep. Okay, great. Uh, so, yeah, I mean, uh, th thanks for that. But uh, really, I mean, um, I just explain a bit of background. It, it's about a six month almost process where in 2019, uh, they had kind of shortlisted people. They reached out to me and then, you know, it was a mix of, I think everybody on that list, I think it's a mix of uh, whatever they've been up to in their careers. And it's a culmination of where they are today as well. So when, when, when the news hit, it was just too overwhelming because, uh, you know, we were in the middle of this crazy, crazy operation. Uh, so much of calls and, you know, um, you know, messages from all different platforms. Almost so, like, you know, I think I went about ask my wife for the reason. I actually had to separate me on a computer. Uh, man of the computer and my Facebook uh, messenger got blocked. Uh, oh. Facebook sent me, they thought there was fraudulent activity because there was too many friend requests coming in. <laughs> so it got blocked uh, for like about a day or something like that. And then I had to reconfirm that I'm actually still behind it and it's not like a bot uh, or something like that. Um, so my wife had to actually, you know, be managing some of my social media accounts because of the number of uh, requests. I mean, this came out. I was like, "Whoa, this is this is great," but really, I don't I don't think I ha I can handle this right now. So I didn't acknowledge it at least for about a five and a half weeks or so. Wow! Uh, and then in the middle, there was a there was a big personal uh, kind of. Uh, achievement i don't know if it's an achievement right? yeah it's an achievement we'll talk uh, about the achievement later on that kind of happened for both of us yeah yeah so so really yeah Shak, in all seriousness I, I just want to make sure that this accolade is really shared with uh, everybody under 30 and just even others because you know sri lanka is on the map right there is no more putting sri lanka on the map it's already mm -hmm. on the map it just depends on what you're going to do. With it. Are you going to be uh, an, an innovator to be talked about outside the public, to run a business that then scale up beyond uh, and that people are going to be talking about? Uh, you know, it's it's what you do with this uh, kind of renewed prominence that Sri Lanka has got in the last few years, right? Um, so it's, it's the same. And, and I think even in my career, if you just take a step back, I think the whole mantra has been really to kind of not take yourself too seriously. And I've never had a plan or a goal. And, and, and that's something that uh, really surprises a lot of people. I still don't. Uh, it's really about making sure that whatever you're doing right now, you're doing your best. And that's all that matters, right? And, and the next part is even if no one recognizes you, that is perfectly fine. Because trust me, 
um, you know, I've been working since 2013 or something like that. Um, I mean, it's not always that people actually recognize the work you do, but sometimes, somewhere down the line, you are going to get that benefit and you just need to enjoy the ride. So I really want to want to take this more, take that whole kind of recognition to say that nothing is really impossible. Uh, we are on a global landscape. So just make sure that whatever you're doing right now, you do it to your absolute with passion. I think the rest of I hope people to apply for uh, I think I mentioned on my status as well. There are two, there are three other Sri Lankans on that list. Right. Uh, I know that I've been getting the most amount of kind of mentions and whatnots, but I think that's that's really unfair. There are three more Sri Lankans who made the list. Uh, the founder of Ro, uh, there's uh, Jayatma Vikramag, who is the highest uh, ranking UN official under 30 in the world, mind you. That's the UN Secretary General's youth envoy. And there's Praveen uh, Jaising, if I'm not mistaken, who is also is a founder of a, of a great uh, new startup. So all of these guys are doing amazing stuff. And there's so many more. I mean, it's just that they've not made the list, right? Very simple. Uh, so I'd like people to just keep at it. You know, at the end of the day, I mean, it's, it's, a, it's a, like you said, uh, you know, very humble about the fact that, uh, you know, it's not a big deal. And clearly there was so much actually happening in your life at that point. So and you had to take about a one and a half weeks to actually acknowledge that, which is, which is something that I don't think anybody else would do it. If someone's nominated, they would have acknowledged it in the next minute or so. But uh, I think there was a lot that was actually going on with your life at that point, And uh, this could wait and it ideally did wait for you now apart from that you also nominated or appointed to the uh, advisory council of global shapers community uh, back in 2019 it's another accolade for yeah. you um, tell us about that and uh, what do you do in this community uh, uh, what do you do and what do you do for the community uh, by being a part of uh, this uh, let me get that right yeah. the global shapers community there you go that's right. So, Shaq, that's an initiative of the World Economic Forum. Basically, the World Economic Forum is the foremost organization for public-private partnerships. So, okay. for example, the annual summit in Davos that happens every year, which, you know, people have heard about in the recent times, is this platform that, you know, for example, uh, a couple of years back or even last year brought together, you know, Mark Zuckerberg on one side and... President Obama on the other side on the same room to right. be talking about uh, you know what more can they do? They together Elon Musk side and probably a policy or a political person. What do this they can do for you know innovative solutions for the rest of the world? So it's the foremost uh, organization for PPP, right? You know, public-private partnership. Within that, they've understood that you know this under thirty category again. They need to create a platform. So I think it. In 2014, if I'm not mistaken, uh, they formed this uh, virtual community where they focused on cities because, uh, Shaq, the whole understanding is that the future is not going to be based on country, right? You know, country borders are going to fall through and it's going to be cities that are probably going to, uh, you know, drive change uh, and also development. If you even look at Sri Lanka, yes, we are, we are a very small country, so as a result, we have you know, just a few cities and we call ourselves uh, Sri Lanka as a whole, but there are some distinct characteristics and it's the development of cities that are going to propel the development of a country. So this is the thing and what they did was they formed um, hubs in each country, uh, self-appointed kind of hub where, you know, each hub will, will have a membership of about 25 members, which rotates every two years. Um, and now they have over 500 hubs across 150 countries with about close to nearly about, I, do, I, I don't get the number right on the shapers, but most about 10,000 shapers across the world. The, the idea at the start was just that we would have this amazing networking opportunity. So, for example, I would be able to just connect with someone from the Brussels hub uh, over, a, over a quick, um, you know, communicate. So we also have a a platform called Toplink that is a little like uh, LinkedIn. Mm -hmm. uh, so I'll be just able to drop a message. If I was visiting Europe, for example, I'd be able to just communicate, okay, guys, uh, London Hub, I'm in London. Uh, do you think we can meet? And then I'll be able to meet a bunch of really young people 
who are also on the same wavelength doing really cool stuff in London. So that was a really, uh, at the start, it was a working platform to exchange ideas and to see whether there are possible collaboration. But over time, what we've done is there's been a mandate now to have community impact projects being done by those relevant city hubs. So Colombo Hub has been in operation since 2014. Um, we've got a great uh, team of, uh, you know, young people who it's a voluntary thing. Um, and also what they did was just to, because this community was getting so large, they formed this advisory council of people who've been in the community for a little while uh, to kind of see how we can structure things better. So that's when they kind of put me up on that uh, last year. Uh, the one thing that I'm, if I was to take away is that there's a huge amount of access to some excellent ideas. So two days back, I was on a, a, a video call or rather a town hall meeting with the Global Shapers. And, and the speaker was the founder of the World Economic Forum, Professor uh, Klaus Schwab, who in fact is the original person who coined the term fourth industrial revolution, right? Wow. So this is this, like, like a genius of our time, right? right? He's the founder of World Economic Forum and he's the founder of Global Shapers. And we were just a video chat, just like you and I, of course, with uh, I think about 600 other people, <laughs> but he was sharing some of these amazing ideas of what he thinks that the post-COVID new world would be, which are really mind-blowing uh, because he's someone, you know, he's, he's 84 years old, Shaq, right? But he's so acutely informed about artificial intelligence, about cutting edge technology that is going to take over the world as part of this fourth industrial revolution. And, you know, he was just, you know, sharing some of the things that he was privy to because he consults so many governments. So it's, it's, it's things like this. I mean, I can't kind of put a finger to it. Uh, we have a few projects running as the Colombo Hub, uh, which focuses on elevating, you know, uh, some underserved uh, communities within Colombo. Uh, but also it's really this whole communal platform that has a lot of sharing that goes on. That seems to be great because at the end of the day, um, I mean, uh, there, I mean, there are tons of ideas that float around around the world, and but thing is, the idea is just on paper. Uh, everybody has great ideas, but then I think maybe an advisory panel of something that you are part of is something that possibly would help them take the idea forward, uh, or maybe a similar idea could have actually come up with a different hub somewhere in the world where the potential of merging those two ideas is also there. Is that something that you guys actually do? Yeah, actually. So I'll give an example of a, of a great project that kickstarted, uh, you know, actually having this goal of planting a million trees right. uh, by the community itself. So then everybody, all the hubs in South Asia actually rallied to that project. Uh, the Colombo Hub also joined in. It's just that we are in the process of actually kickstarting it and taking it. So what we did was virtually everyone made a commitment of a number of trees that they were going to plant. And they kind of created a sort of a digital... Uh, uh, you know, platform to actually monitor these because it's really easy. You just need to, you know, plug in the, the geolocation of some of these. Uh, there's, there's so many great projects like that where people uh, kind of uh, collaborate and, uh, you know, a lot of cross hubs share ideas and implement things. We learn a ton of uh, new ideas from the hubs in India because they are really ahead of the game most of the time. Uh, and we try to organize those here as well. All right, Mehman, we're going to take a quick break right now. And of course, we've been talking about your your accolades as far as being uh, in the top 30 of under 30. And then let's here's a quick message. Charika sends us a message on Facebook. Mehman, in this kind of current situation or in future, if you need more hands to service our citizens, uh, we are there to work as volunteers. What a great message that is. I mean, I'm sure you must have got great Super, messages uh, like that. Yeah. Um, there are lots of people out there. I mean, yeah. if, there, if there ever was a time for you to actually uh, rally behind uh, volunteers, I think we've got tons in Sri Lanka who will lift their hand and say, we are there whenever you need us. So that's a plus point for you guys at Pick Me. Yeah, yeah. definitely. I mean, we've been, been really kind of, you know, taken aback at the generosity of people and, the, and, and you know, the willingness to help. There's been so many great uh, comments that we've got. Uh, so yeah, we, we can discuss a little bit more as we go along because I'd also like to touch on a slightly macro issue that there's also some requirements in the supply chain system, not just voluntary for me per se, but if you look at you know supermarkets, distribution, there's a lot of gaps out there in the market. 
right? Check on one side of the coin. Then on the other, you've got a ton of people who are really not sure about their blocks and what to do. Right? My kind of uh, input into this whole thing is that right now, labor mobility is something that is going to be a true savior for the economy, especially in Sri Lanka. Right. We have to make sure that we get out of the hats to say, you know, I'm an executive in a bank or I'm an executive in this XYZ company. Right. Uh, I want to wear my tie to work. Uh, but really, just roll up your sleeves. Try to see whether you can, you know, get your car out, maybe do some deliveries, uh, maybe pack some bags. And that's just, that's just one end of the spectrum. There are so many other uh, gaps in the market, in the labor market as well. We're going to talk all about that. And of course, I'm sure you guys, uh, Pick Me, have got some great uh, ideas uh, going on right now. But like I said earlier on, uh, lots of great accolades, uh, Mevan, obviously being a part of Forbes uh, Under 30. Then, of course, you're in the advisory uh, p- panel of, of the Global Shapers community. I don't think anything fits uh, than the biggest job that you have right now and the hardest challenge of your life of uh, basically being a first time dad so we're gonna get into that and it's not easy my friend it's not easy trust me yeah, it's not easy that... uh we're gonna get into that we're gonna take a quick break we'll be back with mevan Pires right here on sit back with shack on a thursday evening And welcome to my pod at Hollywood Sham. We'll be reviewing the latest in the movie book, the good, the bad, and the ugly. Mom on the run as I document my journey of being a new mom. We are going to explore into every part of the land to find out all those mysterious history, all the news and insight that you need on the game you love. Only on Pod Hub. Right here on Pod Hub. On Pod Hub. Only on Pod Hub. Here on Pod Hub. Thank you so much. Welcome back on a Thursday evening. Coming to you live on the Pod Hub page. Lots of people obviously sending us comments, which we would love to hear from you. Uh, by all means, go for it and send us all those wonderful comments. Uh, lots of people obviously have uh, sent in their comments, uh, Mevan, and few questions, of course, coming in in different platforms also, which unfortunately we can't pull out uh, on the Pod Hub platform because of the fact that they're on different pages. That's not a problem. But like I said, the biggest prize of them all is the fact that you have become a first time dad uh, firstly before we get into the waves of you and your wife uh, making uh, a history in Sri Lanka so to say the first planned water birth in Sri Lanka um, before we get into that how is the feeling of being a dad Mivan? Shaq I mean I'm sure you can give me some tips on that uh, I mean go truly, get some sleep that's the first thing I'll tell you <laughs> <laughs> I, I actually, that was that was one of the first, uh, a lot of the a lot of our friends who are parents uh, were saying, you know, just enjoy this time, especially with this work from home. And you know, actually, we had like a grand total of two days, if I'm not mistaken, where we actually didn't have much to do at home. And we thought this is amazing. You know, my wife was uh, she she's a child architect as well, and she actually works on site um, at a construction site. So she was home, I was home, and we were like, you know, this is going to be really great, right? Uh, we're going to be Netflixing and chilling uh, for the whole <laughs> month to make the baby. And literally, I know, in a, in a couple of days, that whole thing changed. Right. Uh, so much so, uh, Shek, and I must mention this, uh, because I'd be doing a disservice. I mean, there was there were times that I couldn't really... It was just because I was so focused on, on, on the whole screen and the work. I couldn't actually take 30 minutes off for lunch, right? There right. were times that my wife actually brought uh, my lunch and while I was, you know, typing away or answering calls, she would actually feed me my lunch, right? Right. So I got to give it to her. She, she's, a, she's a superwoman. And um, yeah, I mean, being a dad is, is just just next level, right? I mean, obviously, you know it, right? The whole nine months uh, build up doesn't really hit us that much because, you know, nothing's really changing. I mean... They're expecting something, but nothing's really changing, like physically or, or anything else. Nothing is changing uh, for the guys, Mivan. Nothing's changing for the guys. 
that's what i'm saying that's what i'm saying yeah for the dads for the dads for the dads so but then but then that moment uh, uh, i mean we were blessed with the son the, the moment that that he came out uh, that's that's something else and uh, you guys basically um, let's let's talk, let's talk about this this idea of wanting to actually have a water birth and uh, it's uh, possibly i mean you've obviously gone down with another uh, feather in your cap being the first couple in sri lanka uh, to successfully obviously have a water birth um whose idea was it how did this come about did you guys talk about it for a long time was it uh, in you know in the process uh, talk to us because i mean again you're lucky because now it is available in sri lanka it wasn't some time ago yeah yeah so shak 100% uh, all credit to my wife mm -hmm. uh, because she had actually kind of been researching about water births even before we met even before we started dating rather and definitely way before we started uh, you know getting plans of having a baby uh, so she really wanted to do this and she's been following this youtube uh, channel that actually documents water births uh, overseas uh i mean the way that she was looking at it and, and much later that i've got on to it uh, i actually mentioned this you know to, to put it bluntly like this is as human as it can get you know because right. you're actually in your in your natural environment there aren't uh, uh, you know we're working with gravity right usually when you when a woman gives birth you're actually putting your legs up there it's 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 a little unnatural even though right. you've got used to the process right um so she was really on this and and to be honest i was skeptical right i was like no way like what do you mean a pool like the baby's <laughs> going to drown right because he's going to be birthed into water uh, but then i also you know especially after marriage and what not we slowly got into researching it and i also got it but because the baby actually doesn't drown at all because he is in water in the womb and then right. goes into water so right. it's actually a much smoother process for the baby uh, there's so many benefits for the mother in terms of the, the physiological benefits uh, and and that and even the emotional side because she's in her own space and she's fully in control there is no doctor who is telling her to push or there's no one putting forceps or clamps and pulling something out right it's just the entire uh, work has to be done by the mother so 100% credit to her and really that this is the beautiful story i'd like to make it as short as possible but obviously in in the process of it uh, my excuse because i was still scared i was still scared my like okay look um, i mean maybe you want to do it but babe, it's not available in sri lanka so <laughs> you know that was my excuse and then in august when we were consulting and nine was uh, you know she wanted to ask the doctor very randomly doctor what do you think about water birth that's all we are and he was like yeah, it's a great idea and you know what nine was is actually building this and we were like what no way and you know i think in december they finished building this facility somewhere around jan feb they were kind of ready for it and they said are you okay uh, so jan feb march there was no one actually who was wanting to do the water birth and we were also the due date was actually first of may right so we were really unprepared Shai. trust <laughs> me so we were we were we were uh, living on rent in a really small uh, apartment in nugegora Right. And all of our stuff are in boxes, right? Because right. we were going to shift on the first of April to a slightly bigger place with a couple of more rooms. Right. Uh, everything was in boxes, and I was just working away. My wife was also thinking, "Oh, did we have a month long to go? We don't know." And then tenth of April, whoa, uh, this happened. So it was really, I, I strongly like to believe it was a miracle because everything fell in place. Right. Um, the the doctor was not prepared for that date. Right. It was, you know, 20 days before he actually uh, imagined it would happen. Uh, but, you know, they took the chance, the nurses, there was a midwife from the UK who nine ways had, had got down for this purpose. Uh, and the water birthing process itself, uh, Shak, let me tell you, it's magical. It's like, it's unbelievable. And I really appreciate the, the whole strength of a woman because for like 10 hours, uh, laboring and also she managed the whole process on her own so yeah i, I won't want to call it like an achievement uh, because i had very little to do with it but i'm really glad that it's now available and i'm hoping that more people will opt to do that because that process really brings you kind of closer with you know uh, 
the whole miracle aspect of the birth uh, because you really don't expect all of that to happen without intervention by a doctor That's so the true. doctor was not even there by the way you know the oh, really? doctor really came yeah he he actually and he was he was really mature about it because he said look if i'm going to be sticking around here uh, as a doctor my 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 uh, reflex usual kind of reaction would be that i will want to intervene because right. that's what we are trained to do all our lives right so i'm actually going to take a take a break i'm going to go home and i'm going to cast in for the bird so so that's what he did uh, he was an amazing doctor because it was really cool we've heard from the father and uh, here is the mother who tells us the entire process of the water birth take a look at this hi my name is shanika rupa singha and this is my husband mevan pigris and we were fortunate enough to be the first couple to have a water birth at nine verse hospital uh, so it had always been my dream to have a water birth and at the time that i read about it and researched about it which was so many years ago the facility was not available in sri lanka and i was secretly hoping that one day by the time i become a mother it would be possible to have a water birth in sri lanka so when we started consulting dr prabodhana ranavira in august last year just out of curiosity i asked him how he feels about water birth i didn't think it was it had still come to sri lanka or that it was possible and then he gave me the happy news that nine wells was doing a construction of birthing suites which included a water birth the, the tubbing facility and i was so happy and so excited and i asked doctor whether it would be ready by the time i have my baby we didn't know at that time whether it would be ready or not because obviously there are lots of standards and protocols that had to be arranged but i'm happy to say that by the time it was time to give birth i was very very fortunate that not only was the birthing suite ready but the doctor was also positive and encouraged and advocated for a water birth and also so very importantly the hospital staff had to be trained and they had to be ready to support a water birth and dr prabodhana mentioned to us that he had got down a midwife qualified in the uk miss reni and that she was being brought to sri lanka in order to train the staff overall we had a very positive experience and we are really happy with how things have turned out and we are really grateful that nine verse took the initiative in being the pioneers in this country to have this water birthing facility because if not for someone like me it would just be a pipe dream and today i'm a very happy mother that i could give birth the way that i wanted to and that i feel comfortable with wonderful so yeah we've heard from the father and we've heard from the mother and uh, firstly congratulations guys uh, the first couple in sri lanka uh, to obviously initiate water birth and uh, uh just before we do let you go i just want to find out have you have you have you are you hands on a father so far mevan have you started uh, changing your diapers i try to i try to shack uh, i i have to say it comes actually from my own father who right. was a very very hands on hands on dad um so so luck by chance or you know some fortunate situation because we were in the middle of shifting and we actually couldn't shift to our own place i had no choice than to go back to my parents so right now i am in moroto at my parents place and i'm we're getting the full support of my mom and dad and uh, i'm i'm just trying to live up to what my dad had been all, all my life uh, which is the hands on dad so so far the the good part is that the the baby has identified that one uh when he he doesn't have milk be really crying for milk because i don't have milk figure that part <laughs> to get in the hang of whole burping situation uh, which is still not easy but yeah that that's that's work in progress okay have you have you start singing nursery rhymes to him so far so that's that <laughs> shak yo 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 hitting the the questions in the head you know I've been trying to sing him, you know, by the stuff, right? Because uh, <laughs> just because, Mevan, you know, just because, Moratua. just because you are in Moratua doesn't mean you sing Baila to a new boy. It doesn't it? Doesn't make sense. <laughs> And the the thing is, I don't know how long we are going to be able to stay here. I just right. want him to make the most of it. 
Okay, all right. Before we let you go, my friend, uh, first time dad, and there's a reason that we obviously asked you. We started singing nursery rhymes to your kids because uh, to your baby, um, because we want to test you on the nursery rhymes. Let's see. Forget, forget all the accolades, Mivan. Forget being part of Forbes. Forget obviously being part of some great relief operations with Pick Me. This is the most important thing, my friend. This is the most important thing. So we've got six nursery rhymes for you on the show before we let you go, and uh, let's see if we can get the correct answers okay here we go here's the first one let's let's find out if you get the correct answer good funny one mary had a little lamp where did it follow her to where did it follow oh my gosh <laughs> this, this is unprepared but no of course it is you're a father yeah. you need to know these things so we're prepping you up for it come on mary had a little lamp where did it follow her to milan Oh shit, man! <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. I, okay, I one down. We'll give you the we'll give you the answer to this one. Yeah, it's a follow to the school lamp. one. Okay. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Now you remember. Okay. Here's the second one for you. Hopefully you'll get this. What did Jack and Jill fetch from up the hill? Yeah, uh, a, a a pail of water. Well done, well yeah. done. Good job for you. All right, here's your third nursery rhyme that we're gonna quiz you on. What did Georgie Porgy do to make the girls cry, Mevan? Oh, uh, uh, no, sorry. Come on, I think every boy knows this. What did Georgie Porgy do to make the girls cry? I know I should know it, but no. No, I'm uh, Okay, go on, here's the answer for you. He obviously kissed the kissed girls. The girls. Oh, yes, 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 yes. Yeah, now you remember. Yeah. Now you remember Georgie Porgy. Okay. <laughs> Here's question number four for you. Okay, let's see. Incy Wincy Spider climbed up what? Incy Wincy Spider climb. <laughs> Is it the waterfall? You're no, close. Not the waterfall, but it sounds like waterfall. Waterfall? Yeah, I actually sing this with like, you know, Boru words to, uh, I've been singing this with Boru words. <laughs> Let me be honest. Seven <laughs> spider sprout. What? Water sprout? Water spout is the right oh, answer. Okay. Okay. okay, wonderful. All right, here's your final nursery rhyme before we let you go. Peter Piper picked a peck of what? Peter Piper. No, Shaq. I'm drawing a blank on that one. Too. <laughs> Man. I, okay, I gotta do some yes. research on Pickled this now. Pickled peppers. Pickled peppers, yeah. All right, yeah. my friend, you really need to brush up on your nursery rhymes, okay? You know, you really need to. I mean, that seems to be the place you failed apart from all the other achievements that we've been talking about so far. Sure, sure. Yeah, yeah. But it's been a great chat, Mivan. Thank you so much. Firstly, congratulations on the many accolades that uh, you have. Congratulations, of course, uh, in the great, uh, in, in, in heading the wonderful relief um, um, uh, relief uh, program with Pick Me and, of course, along with the rest of the team, members, being a part of Forbes Under 30, uh, being a part of the Advisory Council of the Global Shapers community, uh, being a first-time dad. Uh, like you said, um, you know, everything is sort of falling into place right now and uh, it's, it just feels that you are in a happy place right now. With, uh, with grace, huh? Insh uh, inshallah. So, uh, Shaq, I just want to say some closing words to him out here. Uh, but trust me, guys, you know, a, a lot of the people who actually know me, know me. I, I'm, I'm still very much the same old, uh, you know, Mewan that you guys used to know. So, if you do have a question, if you do have anything to say, just reach, reach out to me. The only reason that I may not reply is not because, um, you know, uh, I, I've decided not to reply to certain people or whatever it is. It is just that either Facebook will block my messenger because right. of too many messages, or it's just the simple fact that I just don't have the time with so much going on. But I will really try to do that. And please, please reach out for any help, anything that you want to discuss. Uh, always available. And I think, you know, the whole thing is like, Nothing's changed, you know? none of these changes anything, except of course being a, being a dad.
that being a dad yeah except except for that apart from that everything seems to be fine mevan firstly thank you so much for accepting our invitation to be a part of the show and uh, really appreciate it we had a wonderful time a great time with you lots of back stories about so many different things that have happened in the last one month or so which we wouldn't have actually heard about it if we hadn't spoken to you today um so all the very best for your future endeavors and whatever you need to do uh, if there's anything that you want as far as we're concerned we'll be more than happy to help you out uh thanks so much and uh, all the very best to you your wife and of course your newborn uh, and have a great great time thank you thank you so much for having me shak all the best to you too take care have a good one thank you very much guys of course i was mevan peris uh, the uh, head of operations of pick me foods talking to us so many different things and a wonderful wonderful individual he is it's a great guy known him for a long long time and uh, i'm sure he's definitely going to be making more headlines uh, right here in sri lanka and also around the world as we move on thank you once again for being a part of the show we have lots of great guests lined up for you wonderful personalities and of course as always sit back and have a casual chat right here on the show you have yourself a great thursday night i'll speak to you once again next tuesday when we have another super guest lined up right here on sit back with shack have a great night have a great weekend it's a long weekend we've been having the longest weekend of our lives but let you know it's a long weekend have a good night and take care